Hi everybody, this is Marco. Welcome to the third and final part of my series on Microsoft Azure Machine Learning. Uh, in this last part, uh, the in the blog post, I closed off a couple of things that I talked about in parts one and two. And also in this third part, I'm going to be including three videos of which this is the first one. So one of the first things to mention is that uh, I've already logged into these websites. I already have profiles and accounts, so your experience might be slightly different. Uh, I'm not going to cover some basic things like like creating your own Microsoft uh, Live account or anything like that. So uh, I think you can figure that out. I'll start right off with the important things of covering uh, the important topics uh, that I actually covered in the uh, uh, part one and part two of the uh, blog series. So right now I'm on studio.azureml.net on the home page. I'll go to studio here. Okay. These are existing tests or experiments that I've done before, but the first thing uh, you would do is go to new data set. Okay. Here from local file, but basically I need to go and get my data. So if I come over now, I'll go to kaggle.com competitions, scroll down, Titanic, data, what I want is the train.csv, so click on that, save, it's going to download it to my downloads, come back here, from local file, browse, select the file, now what's happening here is uh, basically it's noticing that uh, there's some similarities with some existing data that I have. So if I uncheck this, this is normally the experience you would have if you were doing something brand new. So let's say uh, Titanic training data. Okay, that's what we're going to call it. Okay, uploading the data. Okay, it's uploaded. So next thing, again, come into new, experiment. I'm going to pick a blank experiment. Okay, so basically this is the the welcome page that you get when you get an experiment. Kind of tells you uh, how to create an experiment, drag and drop. I'm going to kind of skip through this, but you're going to see what I'm doing as, uh, as I talk through uh, what I'm doing. So first off, Come down in here to saved data sets, scroll all the way down, and I should find what I saved, which is this one here, Titanic training data. So I could drag that right onto the canvas. I was trying to think of the word that I had used or that I had seen people use uh, in the past. Okay, so there, I have my data. So one of the things to notice here is that uh, you some some of these uh, elements or nodes get uh, sometimes input and, and output points. And you can see these with these little dots here. If I just move over here, I see that, okay, it's a data, data set. I can right click, I can visualize it, which allows me to basically see the data that's, that's contained in the file. So it gives me some the columns gives me some stats as well as some of the uh, entries and how many rows and columns. So that's uh, quite interesting that you can do that with uh, with each of the parts that you can uh, put on the canvas. So one of the first things uh, that I talked about was uh, determining the the columns that would be part of this project. So one of the things here that I'll be looking for is project. So you can see I can easily search for things once I know what the names are. So data transformation, manipulation, project columns. So what I have to do here is I basically have to connect these, the output from here to the input from there. And then there's a little warning sign here, value required, which is basically I have to come in here and do the launch column selector. So these are all the columns that are contained in the file. I don't want them all, and I already kind of talked about that, about uh, what's important and what's not important. But I do want age, the 
sex, the passenger class, which is P class, the fare, and survive. So these are the five things that I basically want to continue uh, using as uh, input to to uh, train my model and things like that. So I also have uh, some data that's missing because in some cases here, uh, some of the uh, age of some people is missing. So what I'm going to do here is clean my data. So that's one of the important things for, for data scientists. So again, connect my output to my input. I need to select. So columns to be cleaned. I don't want all of them. I want to specifically deal with the age one. Here I had to change the options a bit here so that uh, I picked only the age. And if I come over here, I want to replace with the median value. The next thing to do, uh, I've also mentioned that, we want to uh, split our data up. So we want to have some of it for training and some of it for testing. So what we do here is we do a split. So we drag and drop that down here. Connect that. In here, by default, it's a half. It's a 50-50 split. I'm going to change it to 80-20. So we're splitting our data. Now what I need to do is uh, bring in a model. So I take my data. Right, so just show for an example here. Here, if I look at this input, this is a data set. If I look at this input, it's an untrained model. Okay, so I know that my output comes into the input here for the data. And what I need to do for this one is I basically need to go and find an algorithm. So what I had discussed is I took a multi-class decision forest. Drag and drop that over there. Connect these up. So there's a problem here. It says input value required. Okay. So one of the things here that uh, kind of also discussed in the article uh, in the this series of blog posts was uh, your your labels and your features. So over here, I basically have to make that uh, decision or distinction at this point. So basically, uh, what I'm trying to guess if you will, or my label is going to be the survived column. So now that's happy. So I can easily run my experiment now, which would give me all my data, train my model, but then the So let's let's go through with that right now. And as you saw, what I did here is I just clicked on the Run button down here. And now what's happening is I have some uh, clocks here and some check marks as everything's being processed. So 
So now I can visualize. Okay. Now, this doesn't give me a whole lot of information just yet. So once I have my trained model, next thing I want to do is add scoring. So what this allows me to do is compare what my trained what this allows me to do is to use my trained model to test it against the data that I've specified for training. So if I come and I connect these up, I connect that up. Okay. So you see input is a trained model. Input is a data set. So again, I've trained my model using my training data. Now I can score my model by using my trained model against my test data. So I'm going to run that now. And again, we see it's taking some time to run. It's going to back go back through the whole entire process. Now I'm going to visualize my scored model. So it's a bit difficult because it, it has gone through and it has processed the data, but then it's just provided me some numbers here. But one, one thing I talked about in the, uh, in the blog post is the uh, confusion matrix. So to get to that, I need to evaluate. So evaluate my model. So I just need to plug that into there, run, just take a little, takes a little bit of time. There was a queued message up here while it's uh, getting resources from uh, Microsoft Azure. Now if I visualize, I come down here, this is basically what I talked about at one point, the confusion matrix. So uh, for example, for one particular, uh, for, 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 the, for the training data that the, the entry indicated that the person did not survive, I predicted it. 90% of the time accurately. So actually the person died. I predicted it with 90% certainty. Another example, the person actually survived. I predicted, predicted it properly 67% of the time. Another thing up here is the overall accuracy that kind of takes a combination of all of these factors all together. So that's a quick way to look at how accurate my model was, especially if I want to compare it. So that concludes the first part. So that concludes the first video. So in the second video, I'll be showing an example of how I can quickly add a, another algorithm to try to improve the accuracy of uh, my predictions.